Good evening, and welcome to Concerts with Causes, Mission Military. And our guest tonight is an old friend, uh, Stephen Cochran. Stephen, oh, welcome back. Yes, thanks for having me. Stephen Cochran is an American country music singer and songwriter. In 2009, Stephen was named as a spokesman for the United States Department of Veteran Affairs, Research and Development. The VA and Cochran collaborated to produce a music video for de veterans who need help. He is performing tonight, April 13th, at the VFW 23 Prince Street in Wallingford at 7 p.m. Now, some of the proceeds from tonight's performance will go to the organization called Till Duty is Done, a nonprofit organization aimed at reducing veteran homelessness, unemployment, and assisting with successful reintegration. And later on, we'll be speaking by phone to uh, Justin Nash, who is the chairman and founder of uh, Till, uh, Till Duty is Done. But for now, uh, I feel like we've been friends for years. I know. After it's our it's, last been, it's, it's, it's nice, great. Nice it's great to see you, back. man. I'm so glad to be back. And you know, this area, I have a lot of friends who I served in the military with, a lot of friends that I've known, you know, even in the country music world for a long time. So it kind of feels like a homecoming almost. You uh, have had a very busy month, young man. Yes. You uh, just performed in Phoenix, Arizona. Now you're in Connecticut. Next stop, Vegas. Vegas. I'm very jealous. And uh, <laughs> then Nashville. Um, right. Do you, do you like staying busy like that? I, I do. You know, um, part of the thing, you know, we, we, we talk about post-traumatic stress, you know, a lot of things that I do. But one of those things is, is we see a lot of ways that people deal with it. Some people deal with it with drugs. Some people deal with alcohol. A lot of people become workaholics. They just completely engulf themselves in their work. Um, what helps me is to be able to go out and, uh, and perform and just raise awareness for my fellow brothers and sisters. You know, it kind of makes me feel like that I'm still serving and helping in some way. For, for those of you that, that might be un unaware of uh, Stephen's story, you, you were born in Kentucky, and early on you moved to Nashville where you honed your musical career. You were a student at Western Kentucky University and had a developmental deal with Epic Records. Then on September 11th, 2001, happened. Uh, tell us about that day for you at, as you remember it. You know, it's, um, I think that it's one of those days that we'll all always remember where we were at when that happened. Um, for me, you know, I was, I was with uh, some good friends that I'd actually grown up with and we watched the towers fall. We were actually in a courtroom, and uh, he had had a ticket, and we were, you know, going to court for that. Sorry, Alex, I kind of outed you there. <laughs> but um, uh, you know, they they cleared the courtroom, and they told us to go home, that uh, we were under attack. And you know, um, we're all students. We've all studied Pearl Harbor, but I don't think anyone in my lifetime knew what it felt like to be attacked on our own soil. And you know, I think I may have said it the last time I was here, but this is the only country where you can take a dream. Writing music, singing music as a career, as a dream. My dad's a songwriter. This is not something that I was, I was turning this into a family business. So any country that's going to give me that opportunity, I've got to stand up and fight for it. And so I think it was a no-brainer that um, I immediately said, and I don't know, you know, why the Marine Corps was the, the one that I chose, but I immediately looked at my buddy and said, I'm joining the Marines tomorrow. And it was something that, you know, um, I did. And, uh, um, it's crazy to think about the time warp, but nine months later, I was sitting in Kuwait. So, um, so your days as a student and yeah, your days that, as a performer with Epic Records were they were you know. Home. And the thing is, is that, that that just goes to show you how like ignorant a, a young kid is. That I thought all these contracts and things would still be there, but nothing supersedes a government contract, kids. When you're out there, let me tell you this: <laughs> nothing supersedes a government contract. USMC, you signed the adult word contact contract <laughs> and so it's the truth uh, you know so those phones stopped ringing um, I wanted to serve in the Marine Corps I didn't even actually know that there were other jobs in the Marine Corps other than infantry when I joined I didn't uh, I thought that you know that's that's the guys that go in first that's the one their department of the Navy and so that's when I enlisted I fully um, expected to go in the infantry and that's what I ended up with uh, second, uh, well, I went to infantry training battalion and then ended up with second light armored reconnaissance as a reconnaissance scout um, to the invasion to Iraq, which we just um, celebrated our 13 year anniversary of the Battle of the Coil, which was the longest sustained combat since Vietnam. And that was just me and my guys. You know, nine months later, from college kid, songwriter, to the longest sustained combat since Vietnam. Did, did you find a lot of people did that uh, yeah. September 12th? They it, 
they, they and you know there was such that. a divide and I remember this there's such a divide because there was a thing back then in the invasion called stop loss um, they had to have time to train all these young guys who were coming in to go fight for their country and so um, while they were training the poor guys whose contracts were up they still had to go and at least see us into you know they had done four years they were senior uh, military, of course, they'd never seen combat either. You know, what we realized, the first round that flew past any of our heads, what we realized is all the training that we'd been taught had been taught to us by men who had never seen combat. And you're thinking, I mean, at the most, you had Desert Storm, Somalia, or, or Vietnam. But as far as the sustained combat that we were starting to see in Iraq and Afghanistan, nobody that I was trained by had seen anything like that. And, uh, and so, you know, um, that's why our motto is adapt and overcome, because you have to find out what works uh, when it does hit the fan and what doesn't work. And, you know, you've got to modify your gear. I, the gear that I wore in Iraq did not work in Afghanistan. Well, because I hardly had any gear in Iraq. Let's go back to that. Uh, anybody that served the invasion of Iraq knows that we had one sappy plate, no up armor. I mean, it was, I think that they were probably better uh, equipped at the end of Vietnam than we were for the invasion to Iraq. Um, and, and the Battle of Nazaria, you know, they talk about how many Marines we lost, but r literally we lost that many Marines to our own air. You, you have a story that we're going to touch on a, a little bit later that, uh, that happened to you when, uh, when you did serve uh, overseas. Again, we're talking to uh, Stephen Cochran, part of Concerts with Causes, uh, Mission Military. Uh, performing tonight, uh, April 13th. If you're watching, streaming live on uh, on the web, this uh, you're seeing this live. He's performing in less than an hour. Yeah. So down at the uh, at the I VFW, 23 uh, Prince Street. Um, would you favor us with a with a song? I would actually. You know, and and I'm thankful to be here. Uh, Mr. Travis McVeigh is the founder of Heroes Vodka. I don't know if you can see my shirt here. Um, Travis, um, you know, is a Marine, and he also he found this company because he wanted to give back to our brothers and sisters, and it gives us a way to also educate. You know, uh, alcohol is a huge part of the military, especially the Marine Corps. We're the only branch of the military that was founded in a bar. That's Tun Tavern, Pennsylvania. I did not know Yes, that. sir. Tun Tavern, Pennsylvania is where we were founded. And so... Is Travis here? He is. Travis is out there. He'll probably, you'll probably hear him yelling when I start playing this song. <laughs> right. Because um, I'm, if he hasn't got lawsuits coming in, they're coming. <laughs> um, but we wrote, the, we wrote this song together um, when we were out tasting some of the Heroes Vodka uh, challenge recipes that was coming up. And like I told you earlier, we didn't know that you were supposed to spit all of the vodka out, just swish it around. I thought, you know, it was like wine. <laughs> it's like, how do you know if it's good unless you're like wobbly after you? So, <laughs> um, marine logic, all right? So uh, I, I remember us crawling from a few cabs to, to the house. And so one morning I woke up particularly, and, and this was what I saw as I woke up. And we now refer to my house forever as the Grown Man Frat House. <laughs> so this is on my new album, and it's uh, Travis and I wrote this. Stephen Cocker, ladies and gentlemen. This morning with a bad feeling of bad last night I opened up my bedroom door, guess what, that feeling was right Well I don't know how this starts, I just know where it ends With me and some alcohol and all my divorced friends at the grown man frat house We're drinking, laughing, and we're living our youth That's right, we're all grown-ups But we're acting like we're 22 <laughs> Well, if you've been left or kicked out We've always got an extra couch At the grown man frat house <laughs> Now this part's about Travis, especially here. <coughs> well, our house president's old Travis McVeigh. Well, his wife, she left him for a doctor, they say. He turned his love for vodka into a big payday. And now we all drink for free, playing beer pong and DMB. That's Dave Matthews. 
<laughs> well, I've had a fiance or two. I've never actually said I do. But I can never get locked out. The true story is the reason I can't get locked out is because up till recently, we didn't have a back door. Because someone kicked my door in. Travis McVeigh. <laughs> At the grown man frat house, we're drinking, laughing, never living our youth. That's right, we're all grown ups, but we like them around 22. If you've been left or kicked out We've always got an extra couch At the grown man frat house Oh yeah, at the grown man frat house Well that's where you'll find me At the grown man frat house Bravo, <laughs> bravo Thank you. And the aforementioned Travis McVeigh is uh, is in the house. I think you kind of heard him say that. That's a lie. That's <laughs> his. Yeah, three fiancés now, not two. Oh, oh. No, no. You want to come? You want to come out and no. say it? Because I don't know if, if you can pick it up. Come on, say hello just for a second. Travis McVeigh. Travis McVeigh. Hey. He's one of the writers of the song that we just played as well. And he lived it. Yeah, he gave me credit on one, but the other one he didn't give me credit for. He wanted to give it to a girl oh. he used to date. Okay. No. Okay. And, the, and the booth can can you pick him up on the mic? Uh, can you pick up yeah. Travis on the mic? Now, how long did it take you two to write that song? Uh, no, it just took us a, a night to live it. <laughs> and, then, and then the writing came pretty easy. You just kind of wrote down what you saw. I walked out of my bedroom, and this guy had on an overcoat, a sport coat, a tie, dress pants, and dress shoes. That's and he was. Because there was no door in the back, and it was wintertime. <laughs> and he's laying on the couch. I thought we had had like a, like a, like a funeral. And there would be no Heroes Vodka if that night had went like I thought they had went. Irish wake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Travis, for the inspiration for the song. You, and, um, and are there any samples for later on? Uh, yes, we're going at the BFW. We have plenty over there. And our oh. motto is some people drink to forget. We drink to remember. So we drink to all of our friends and brothers and sisters that gave their lives to this country. They're the true right. heroes. Here, here. here. And like I was well saying, said. you know, it does give us a way to educate because alcohol is a big part of the military. And, you know, they wouldn't just give us our weapon and send us overseas to fight without training. And so, but yet they do indoctrinate us into this alcohol without giving us a training how to properly drink alcohol. Now, am I saying that I do it like that all the time? By no means am I your role model. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we're talking to uh, Stephen Cochran, Mission Military, Concert for Causes. He is performing tonight. April 13th at uh, 7 p.m. at the VFW, uh, 23 Prince Street. Part of the proceeds is going to the Till Duty is Done. Justin Nash, the founder and chairman, will be calling in by phone in a few minutes, and we'll have a, uh, we'll have a chance to uh, chat with him. Um, I want to go back to, to your duty in uh, overseas, and in particular, one, one incident that we did talk about last time. You, you were severely injured in combat. And at the time, you were told you would never walk again. But doctors at the Nashville VA hospital had other ideas. Just tell us about what had to be a very, very dark day in your life right. and, and how you got through it. No, and there's the, the way I was injured was um, we, were not, we were in Afghanistan. Um, my vehicle is an LAV, a light armored vehicle. And so the enemy had had dug entrenchments and areas for, uh, they had an anti-tank bomb, I think, in one of them. Um, our military had came along, the army had came through and dug those up, but they left the holes behind. We didn't know that. We got called to the front as we were doing convoy security on the way out of Afghanistan, and my vehicle struck one of those large holes. And that threw me from the LAV up onto the bustle rack and then back into the LAV, breaking my L1 to L5, shattering all my discs and lumbars. Mm -hmm. And then and also, mm -hmm. anybody that knows what a sappy plate is knows that those plates are used to stop. I mean, they can stop up to machine gun fire. I'm larger than 7.62 at some times, depending on how they're struck. And mine was broken half. I mean, actually, one of my buddies, when he went to pull me out of the vehicle, pulled the top part of my sappy plate off. And uh, at that point, we knew that, you know, it was, uh, they knew um, uh, I had already, I'd hit my head as well. So I had a TBI, and um, I'd already lost consciousness. Um, and but, it wasn't, but I want to go back, because the doctors did perform yes, a miracle. And uh, I want to get back to it, but, but now... We have uh, Justin Nash, oh, great. the founder and chairman of Till Duty Is Done, is on the line. Justin, good evening.
Justin's very maybe uh, maybe a little shy. But yeah, he's Justin Nash. Can uh, can you hear us? Uh, I think we may have him. Justin, Justin Nash, are you there? He's there. I hear him. Okay, I think we may have him now. Justin Nash, good evening. I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, hey, yes, we yeah. can. Very, very well. Thank you very much for, for calling in. Um, You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I, I just want to talk a little bit about your organization, Till Duty is Done. It's a nonprofit organization aimed at reducing veteran homelessness, unemployment, and assisting with successful reintegration. The organization fosters a sea of goodwill by linking and integrating existing organizations that provide education, employment, health care, mentorship, and other supportive services. This is Justin Nash, the founder and chairman of Till Duty is Done. Uh, Mr. Nash, I just want to first ask you, what gave you the idea to start this organization? How much of a need was there? Uh, well, there's a tremendous need. Um, I, I think it was really kind of spawned from my own experience you know, really in the job seeking process, um, you know, not really being able to navigate the system very well, uh, running into people here and there that said, hey, by the way, you really should go and see this person because of this ailment you have or, or this condition that you brought back with you or, or that um, percentage of rating that you have. Um, so I, I was really bouncing in and around the services uh, trying to understand uh, what was really out there and available for me. Um, and then I didn't really understand exactly how my military career translated very well to the civilian market. Um, so there was some navigation processes. Now, I, I, I felt like I was one of the lucky ones uh, because I, I was of higher education uh, and was able to navigate the system. But I said to myself, hey, if I'm having a difficult time, I can only imagine how, how, how hard it would be on my soldiers. What, what does a veteran do to, to become eligible to be part of Till Duty is Done? Well, there's really not uh, an eligibility requirement per se. Um, all, we want to help any and all veterans, so uh, we recommend that they, they, uh, we direct them to our website. Um, and, uh, and, and get in contact with us. We are in the process of uh, further developing some software um, that we can utilize to, to enhance our offering as, as our, um, uh, our veteran pool grows. Um, but really go to the website, www.tdid.org. Uh, look us up on Facebook um, and, and really just get connected. And then we start the process from there. Again, we're talking to Justin Nash, the founder and chairman of Till Duty is Done. A uh, proceeds from uh, Stephen Cochran's performance tonight will be going to that uh, organization. Um, Justin, if someone, a veteran or not a veteran, wanted to support your organization, um, how could one help? There's a number of ways that volunteers can help. Um, we are, like I said, we are in the process of growing our um, our. our electronic our capability so that we could service more veterans. Um, so we will be uh, bringing counselors on board um, to serve as, as, as case managers. We call them squad leaders. Um, that will be one situation that's opening. Um, we have events uh, scattered throughout the year um, that we do typically need volunteers for to do anything from uh, run uh, pieces and parts from here to there or um, to be a mentor. Um, our, our big event at the end of the year is, is Vets Rock. It's uh, on Veterans Day. And, and that we will probably be looking for about 200 volunteers uh, to, to execute and deliver the, the amount of services that we offer to the veterans. I know you had a very nice event uh, in doing research for this. I saw it at uh, Mohegan Sun uh, yeah. la last year. Uh, any any events coming up uh, around the corner? or is, uh, Yep. So, so we have, um, uh, there is a intercollegiate, um, the, the UConn uh, golf team has named their intercollegiate, intercollegiate golf tournament in our honor. So it is the UConn Till Duty is Done Collegiate Invitational. That's going to be very exciting because 
there's a team of all the NCAA has sanctioned an all veteran team to compete amongst the 13 schools that division one college golf teams in this tournament. So it's a team of all veterans. Most have not ever played or gone to college. So now they have a chance to play on a team against some of the best in the nation. That's April 23rd and 24th at the Mohegan Country Club. We have Hot Rods for Heroes is actually putting on an event in Wallingford in August. And that is, we are the beneficiary of that event. So that would be very exciting. It's the first of its kind in Wallingford. So we're excited to be part of that. And then Vets Rock is coming again on Veterans Day at Mohegan Sun. This year we are bringing, it hasn't been announced yet, but we're bringing the wall that heals the traveling Vietnam wall to Mohegan for that event, as well as the same thing where we have the services and hiring our heroes event during the day and the concert at the end of the day. Very, very good. Well, listen, Justin, we want to thank you again. That's Justin Nash, the founder and chairman of Till Duty is Done. For, uh, for veterans, the proceeds from Steve Stevens' performance tonight will go to Will Duty is Done. Till Duty is Done. Uh, one more before I let you go, Justin. Let's plug that website uh, one more time, please. So the website is www.tdid.org. Tdid.org. All right, we want to thank you very much for calling in. And, and Steve, any, anything for Justin? Hey, man, you know, Justin's real humble. He won't tell you that he's also a, a great warrior himself. And, you know, just showing the terminology that he uses is, you know, squad leaders and team leaders. These are something that veterans understand. And that's what we're trying to do is integrate them back into the civilian population. But use terminology that makes them feel comfortable while doing it. And he's just done a top-notch job. So, Justin, I thank you for everything you're doing, man. And, and uh, Semper Fi, brother. That's, that's right. Thank you. Justin Nash, ladies and gentlemen, from uh, Till uh, Duty is Done, the founder and, uh, and chairman. And sounds like a very successful uh, oh, yeah. organization. They're doing great things. And, you know, I, I, that's one of the things I'm talking about now when I go out and do a lot of these shows is people, you know, with what's going on in the news with a certain organization that's one of the larger ones out there and the scandals that's kind of that followed them, us in the veteran community have known this was coming for quite some time now. Um, there are places where you can go check the 501c3 ratings of these organizations that you're giving your money to. And what my advice to you is, keep your money local. There are local veterans in the community, and these, there's a lot of organizations that are local that are taking care of these veterans. Keep your money there because then you can see it working. You can see what it's doing in your community. You can you see if your veterans are actually getting the money that, that's, that's extended to them. And, and I, you know, we could talk. We should I know, we could. We could talk all night. We've got seven minutes left. Y'all, send in money. <laughs> we'll start our own, like, web series. <laughs> but uh, let's go back to, to that, the day when, when the doctors told you that you wouldn't right. walk again. Just, just continue uh, briefly, if you could. With the yeah, it, you know, I don't, I don't know how, how to explain that. It's, you know, one day you think you're the closest thing to Superman that there is. Because the Marine Corps does that well. They do one thing better than anybody, and that's make you believe that you can walk through walls of lead and that you are Superman. And so you, you think one day that you're Superman, and the next day you're half a man. And, uh, you know, um, when I talk in that last song, there's a lot of funny things in Grown Man Frat House, but I talk about two fiancés. These are things that, that, that we make comical jokes about that veterans are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. They're losing their loved ones because you come home and you're not the same man, whether it be emotionally or physically and emotionally like, like I returned. But um, I don't think I ever believed that I'd never walk again. Um, again, that may have just been that Marine Corps in me thinking, hey, you know what, I'm going to teach you these doctor's lessons. I'm going to walk to prove you can't tell a Marine anything. Um, but it did. It helped in my fight. And, you know, uh, thankfully, I got a surgery at the Nashville VA. But, you know, there's, there's thousands of guys out there who were injured as badly, if not worse than me, who didn't get that surgery. And that's, that's why I try to continue the career that I have, is to go out and, and do this for them. Well, what's the, in the few brief minutes we have left, because I have two questions. Okay. Uh, one kind of comical, but one right. the biggest problem facing veterans today. Well, yeah, we have so many problems uh, facing veterans today, but, but one of our biggest right now is our health care system. I mean, uh, I could talk, say suicide, but again, it's part of our health care system that's failing us. Um, uh, I was a national spokesman as part of the Veterans Affairs system. It was research and development, and I'll still say this day, there is no 
research and development in the United States of America that is second to VA research and development. I mean, they're the reason we have a cure for polio. They're the reason that we have uh, the artificial heart. That was VA research and development that did that. However, when you look at the VA as a whole, we have failed our veterans with this organization, with this, this, this uh, I won't even call it a, a service of medical uh, for veterans because that's not what we get. We have a joke among veterans that says the VA, giving veterans a second chance to die for their country since 1776 or however long it's been around. But I know that every time I go to the VA, I'm kind of spoiled. The Nashville VA is amazing, but I go out and see some of the other VA, Phoenix VA, that, that's not, that's unsat. Um, you know, there, there's, there's VAs that, that don't have, you can't get x-rays done. So we've got to, whoever you're voting for, you know what, I'm going to use this time right now for this. There is a person running who has not done our veterans very well, ever. That kind of segues in, into my last. And she does not need to be the President of the United States, ever. And for the Vietnam veterans, I know that are even supporting her. It would be like my era of veterans voting for Jane Fonda, except the difference is Jane Fonda was 21 years old and she made a mistake that it, you know, a young person made. This woman had a chance to save my brothers and sisters that I served with in the invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan. And I take it personal when people, when people stand up for her or even look, I, I'm not a political person. I don't have a dog in this race. I don't even know if I'm voting. My only thing is, is I'm blocking her from the White House. That's my only goal. I, I actually, it, it, you, it segues to Sorry, my I last, little, last, last. I don't know if you can see, I got flustered on that one. Um, what advice would you give to the next president regarding veterans, whoever it may be? Put the what, veterans, what you know, put the veterans first for once. This is 1% of our nation out of 99%. If this was Sparta or anywhere else where, you know, 99% protects the ones, if you came home in Sparta, you didn't have to worry about things like that. You were taken care of. We need to do that. We have 1% of our population that we can't effectively take care of. That's unsat as a country. You know, we want to talk about black lives matter, white lives matter. These are black and wives, white lives who are willing to give their life for every life in this country. We need to make sure that they're taken care of. Well said. Well said. His name is Stephen Cochran. He's an American hero. Uh, you could see him on YouTube. Probably be and trending after Facebook, some of these comments. But you can you can see him at the VFW <laughs> tonight, April thirteenth. I know he's all around. He'll he'll be in Vegas. He'll be in yeah, Nashville. Yeah, I'm in Vegas for the third time this but, year. My liver may not survive. <laughs> but tonight he'll be at the VFW. You want to play it's us out? It. Yeah, that'd be great. It, it's, um, it's been a pleasure, it's been my great, friend. Great man, thank you so pleasure. much for having me again. Stephen Cochran, ladies and gentlemen. I wake up, start my day, like all the rest, first I pray for this past that I can't change. And I wait for all these memories to go away. But I'm still breathing, in and out one day at a time, and I keep believing. Against all odds that there's no doubt That there's a reason That I'm still breathing But once again, I'm on my own Just when I thought you were my home But this man that I am Is too much for even me to stand but oh, I'm still breathing In and out one day at a time Yeah, and I keep believing Against all odds that there's no doubt That there's a reason That I'm still breathing Don't make me go down this road alone I hope you find your way back home But I'm still breathing In and out one day at a time You keep me believing Against all odds that there's no doubt That you're my reason Oh baby you're my reason Oh you're my reason I'm still breathing.
Thank you. Bravo. Bravo. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and then out. Arrow. Ah, hit the button.